This is Roger with Wheel Kinetics in Tucson, Arizona. We're selling this truck as a 2005 Ford F350 uh, crew cab, dual rear wheel, King Ranch. Uh, it's four wheel drive, 60 turbo diesel, has 183,000 miles. Purchased it directly from an insurance company in San Antonio. Um, it's on a salvage title due to theft, not collision. Please watch the little three minute animated video on the subject and you'll learn why and how you end up with a salvage title when a vehicle is not wrecked or damaged. Now I'm going to walk around this thing, show you what's happening. They stole the entire King Ranch, well not the entire interior, I should do it, just the seats and the center console. Um, we purchased seats, and uh, front and rear seats, but we did not replace the center console. Uh, center consoles, can, if you want one, can be gotten for, well it depends, if you want the King Ranch one, you can probably buy one for two or three hundred dollars. A lot of people take them out anyway and use that area as a pass-through for people or for dogs or for more room or whatever. Um, anyway, we did the best finding some used seats. Paid a fortune for them, but they're there. Um, it's also got the FX4 suspension package, which is Rancho suspension put on the on, on at the Ford factory. It's not aftermarket per se. It's just uh, upgraded suspension that uh, Ford puts on at the factory. Touch up paint and clean that up a little bit if you wanted to. It's a really clean truck. Very straight. It's got Michelins on the front that are probably, well, not probably, they are at least 70% tread, I would say. What's impressive about this truck is how straight it is. And Whoever drove it did a nice job because they decided not to bash in the rear wheel covers, which is about almost every vehicle has something wrong with them. The rears are BFG rugged trail tires, and they're probably 90% tread. So based on that, I would say this guy just preferred to have this tire pattern and this tread pattern on the rear. We didn't buy the tires, but they're very high tread. Uh, Michelin's on the front and BFG rugged trails on the back. Somebody probably stole the. They probably tried to remove this FX4 sticker that's supposed to go here to try to hide from the cops. When they get when they get stolen, the person who's the victim usually calls the cops and says, "Oh, it's an FX4." There's big stickers on the side, so they probably got one of the stickers off. I haven't even noticed. It really. Yeah, see, there's supposed to be a sticker on the other side. So they probably, it's actually very hard to get these things off. And uh, I would say that they got a little tired of pecking at it, decided to stop at one side. After all, car thieves are lazy in general. They can earn their money and do it. There's a light package, there's a rollover uh, gooseneck hitch trailer package the bumper and the I just see a little thing right here the tailgate it's a beautiful truck there's the uh, gooseneck hitch turnover ball handle there you turn that over and you'll have a gooseneck come out of the bed and these are the rears they're BFG rugged trail TAs on the back and new Michelin, new, almost new Michelin on the front. I'm going to fire this thing up. I'm going to show you uh, where all the Ford stamps are supposed to be on the fronts of the core supports and on the fenders. If, if, when they're there, that indicates that uh, parts haven't been replaced. Let me see if I can get some files up here. 183,479 miles. There you go. This was clearly uh... Gosh, I thought it was oh, that was the brake release. <laughs> uh, and I'm slow today. for the Ford stamps. There's the Ford stamp on the uh, passenger fender. New battery on this side. There's the Ford stamp on the uh, dry, uh, passenger port support. 
There's the stamp, Ford stamp on the driver core support. There's the stamp on the uh, driver fender. This is a new battery also, so it also has two brand new batteries. Runs like a champion. I'm gonna walk you around, show you what the interior looks like and make sure all the windows, locks, everything works. And if it doesn't, I will note that. That's the driver rear window. Here are the seats. They can be clean. That stuff will not completely go away, but these are saddle leather seats. If you're familiar with them, you know, you get some saddle soap and some conditioner. A lot of this goes away, but some of it doesn't. That's what they look like. That said, they're bulletproof. There's a reason they never have holes in them, because they're very thick leather. There's your passenger rear window. But the detail shops don't want to spend, you know, hours on one spot in the seat. A lot of that stuff will come out. I've had them where they, ten times worse than that, and that stuff, and, and they'll come out, and then I've had them where they don't. So, some saddle soap and some conditioner and start scrubbing if you can. Here's your passenger front window, door locks. Door locks work. Let's see. Heated seats. That's on. Off. You can see the light or not. I can. That's off. That's on. Alright. off. Push your seat back. Seat forward. Pull seat down. Pull seat up. Your seat back up. Your seat back down. Front seat back up. Front seat back down. Okay, all that works. A little action here on the seat. Like I said, I think you need to spend a little bit of time on this. That's where the center console would go if you were to buy one. I would just go to Pet Boys. There's a bunch of uh, loose parts. There's an ignition from when they stole the ignition. This stuff's going to bounce around in the video, so I'm going to take it out of the blood box, throw it on the ground so it doesn't sound like the truck's falling apart with all this crap in it. But uh, <laughs> there's part of the ignition. Uh, there you go. I guess the uh, detail shop wanted us to have all that crap. Alright. There's your driver window. Passenger window. Drive, re uh, passenger rear window, I'm sorry. And driver rear window. Door locks. Door locks look fine. There's on and off for the heated seats. Forward. And go back. Forward. Pull seat down. Pull seat up. Front seat cushion up. Front seat cushion down. Rear seat cushion up. Rear seat cushion down. That works fine. This seat actually feels really good. It's ironic the driver's seat is probably the best one of all of them, but uh, they all could use conditioner. Uh, what's interesting about this truck is it doesn't have power pedals and it doesn't have an uh, automatic uh, four-wheel drive push button. Whoever had this truck was smart <laughs> and they didn't do that because that's a waste of money. Didn't do the power pedals and, and asked them to make, give them a floor shifter four-wheel drive, which is also smart to deal with actuators breaking and all that stuff um, but he did want a power slider in the rear window which is interesting here's your power slider and but he also didn't want floor uh, parking sensors which is unusual so the guy knew he could drive didn't need to have someone help him back up Wanted a power slider so he probably had some sort of a camper on it also while he was towing interesting all right let's see here. Open the vents, make sure that we've got it going on. The radio on. Let's see if the radio controls work. It's a change station. So the 
radio controls work, everything works in the radio. Assisted exchanger, air is blowing cold. Let's see if we can change the temperature with the steering wheel. We can, and the fan. And we can, so everything works there. There's all that stuff. Let's see. Systems check. There's toe on and off right here. Okay. You put it in neutral. Let me throw it into four low. Boy, that was easy. There's four low. Put it in reverse. I like this truck. I like the floor shifter a lot. It takes a lot of the stress out of this thing. Now it's four high. So definitely was in four low work and four high in reverse. Not a problem. Nice truck. All right. Put it neutral. Put it back in two wheel high. Let's go for a ride. It's on a salvage title. So if you want to come to Tucson to get plates and insurance, you have to have restored salvage title. It means we have to take it to motor vehicles and have the police do an inspection. It's called a level three inspection. Once we have the level three, we can get you a restored salvage title. Only then can you get plates and insurance. So obviously, if you're coming here to drive it home, that's mandatory. Um, we charge $200 to do that for you. Um, what else? Um, taxes. Taxes are 2% city sales tax here in Tucson plus whatever your state tax rate is. If your state tax rate is 3% and you come to Tucson, you're going to pay 5% total tax. R3, year, or R2 plus year 3 is 5%. You're going to pay a dock fee of $250. You're going to pay $200 to restore the title. If you pay by wire and ship, all you're going to pay is your meter pump price and that's it. I do strongly suggest, however, if you pay by wire and ship, that you still have us restore the title before it leaves. That way we can get a restored salvage title and mail to you, and you can just go to, you know, once your truck shows up, you can just take it to motor vehicles, the title itself, not the truck necessarily, or, you know, go get yourself plates, and that's pretty easy. You're welcome to do it on your own. Just make sure you know if you can, you can get it done with a bill of sale, as Arizona salvage title, and the truck itself, because that's all we can provide. Well, it's a big boy. Runs good. Runs really good. Um, make sure you get a deposit in. Deposit's $500. Well, if you have a deposit, we will put your name in a banner over the truck at wheelkinetics.com. Until then, it is for sale. All right? Um, eBay people, especially, but people in general. I give this speech at the end of every video. I'm not singling this truck out because it's got a problem. I'm just going to say it like I do on all of this. So please watch all the videos at about the 12-minute on mark. I'll give this speech. Um, this is not a new vehicle, obviously. So, if you if you want a new vehicle, if you want zero risk, um, you need to go go buy a new vehicle. And a new King Ranch is about seventy-five or eighty thousand. I know that for a fact because I just saw good friend's father buy one, and I almost had a stroke when I saw what he paid. Anyway. Uh, that's what you need to do though. Then you get the bottled water and the loaner truck or car or whatever and everything's good. Um, there is risk in buying a used car, so please assume that there's going to be something wrong sooner or later. It could be next week a check engine light comes on. could be never. Uh, these are famous for EGRs. Um, a reputable guy, uh, dealer or repair guy, can do an EGR for 600 in parts and about five or seven hours of labor. 1500 bucks is a fair number. Um, Scumbags are doing it for over two thousand dollars, and I've seen a couple guys doing it for three thousand, and that's just absolutely outrageous. And I have customers tell us this, and you know, three years after buying a the truck, they had to get an EGR done, and their best friend said it was three thousand dollars, and I'm telling them that they're not friends. <laughs> that your best friend is not your friend. Anyway, that's what goes wrong with them. It's not happening in this truck at all right now, but that's their weakness. Okay. Anyway, please know what you're buying. If you don't like risk, don't buy a used vehicle. Okay? Anyway, this is badass. Thank you very much for your time.